You're watching TVC Breakfast. It's time for the paper review. Let's get to see what the headlines are across Nigeria. And I have with me to make sense of all of these. Obani Akinwale is here, one of our analysts. It's good to have you join me this morning. Thank you. And I have joining me on Skype one of our regulars, Chris K. Ndingwandu. He's the CEO of CKN News. Chris, good morning. Thank God it's Friday, Mike. Thank God it's Good Friday. Morning. But you're dressed as though you're going for a conference. You're not dressed like a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good, good, good to see you, though. Good to see you. Now, let's begin with uh, the News Direct. News Direct newspapers is where we start from. And uh, it says, open grazing ban is irreversible. Southern governors are saying this. And advise Malami to approach the court. Uh, recall the uh, governor of uh, Ondo State had uh, uh, made the statement on behalf of uh, his colleagues. Open grazing ban is irreversible. That's the news direct. From there, let's go to the national economy. Illicit financial flows. Nigeria recovered 289 billion naira in four years. That's the federal government revealing this. Illicit financial flows. Nigeria recovered 289 billion naira in four years. That's by the federal government. Okay, from there, let's go to the leadership newspaper. Leadership says Malami under fire over restructuring open grazing ban comments. Malami, that's the Minister of uh, Justice, under fire over restructuring open grazing ban comments. AGF uh, pursuing parochial agenda, a Senate spokesperson is saying this. His, uh, Unfit to, he's unfit for office, Afeni Ferry is saying this. Uh, decision irreversible, say the southern governors. These are all comments about different things. All right, that's the leadership newspaper. First news is next, and it says uh, how Boko Haram leader Shekau blew himself, others up after ISWAP's capture. Uh, a report is uh, revealing this. And uh, the military has said they're studying the issue and cannot uh, make conclusions on that just yet. That's the first news. Daily Trust is next. How 300 Libya-trained ISWAP fighters conquered Shekau. We're yet to get information on Shekau's death as the military is reacting to this on Daily Trust. And the ISWAP has fulfilled its long-term mission. An expert is uh, saying this. Okay. Uh, we might be talking about this as we open discussions uh, after this. Now, Daily Times is uh, our next point of call. EFCC recovers over one billion naira from civil servant. EFCC recovers over one billion naira from civil servant. Okay, that's Daily uh, Times. Blueprint newspaper says, Shekau dies, ISWAP takes over Sambisa forest. Shekau dies, ISWAP takes over Sambisa Forest. Boko Haram leader committed suicide negotiating with ISWAP as the report is revealing this. We're investigating sect leader's death. That's the army is uh, saying that. That's on the Blueprint newspaper. Okay, we'll look at that when we open discussion. This day newspaper is next. Southern governors, others rebuke Malami for opposing open grazing ban say cattle restriction will be vigorously enforced. And a Fenifere Senate spokesman demand minister's removal. Okay, these are still uh, reactions from there. That's this day newspaper. Nigeria Tribune is next. All right, uh, open grazing. You are wrong, lawyers tell Malami. Okay, uh, there's so many lawyers reacting to this here and uh, so many senior advocates of Nigeria they all made their comments on this. Okay, we'll be talking about this certainly as we get along. Uh, the Guardian newspaper is still on the same issue. You goofed, Akeri Dulu, others chide Malami on open grazing comments. AGF on an agent uh, provocateur says Afenifere uh, Ohaneze. Now, these are all comments from on the same issue. The Vanguard newspaper, Malami under fire for supporting open grazing. Banning grazing is same as northern governors prohibiting spare parts trading. Malami made that uh, comment. 
uh, go to court. Open grazing ban irreversible. Southern governors uh, made that statement. And uh, Akiru Dulu, Umahi, Okowa, Peter Said, Falano, Ohaneze, Afeniferi, MBF, Pandev, Lambaste, uh, the uh, uh, Attorney General of the Federation. Sak Malami now, Senate spokesman tells Buhari, no restructuring if governors disallow local governments from working. That's the federal government is uh, quoted as saying that. Okay, we'll certainly look at uh, these issues. Uh, Daily Sun says, fireworks over open grazing ban. It's unconstitutional. Malami is saying this. Those against ban want killings to continue. Umahi is saying this. And the AGF twisting constitution, Ohaneze, is saying that. Open grazing outdated. Mieti Allah's patron is saying this. And the Keridolu, AGF can go to court. Simple. Okay. These are all still comments from there. The Nation newspaper says anti-open grazing ban. AGF Malabi under fire. That's the Attorney General for the Federation. Governors, senators, lawyers, Ohaneze, Feniferi, Nok, minister. They all have their comments on this issue. Okay, that's the nation newspaper. The Punch. The Punch is focusing on the same thing. Open grazing, spare parts comparison. Uh, Malami under fire as a Dulu South uh, stakeholders lampoon the uh, uh, Attorney General of the Federation. Comparing open grazing to spare part sale betrays terrible mindset. A Dulu is saying that as the governor of Ondo State. Senate spokesman wants Malami fired. Says the AGF under primordial sentiment stand thoughtless uh, prejudice or uh, preju uh, preju prejudicial sorry or is saying this and comment nonsensical <laughs> this is from senior advocate of nigeria uh, uh, falano all right these are all still comments from there okay let's uh, get into this discussion now uh, i'll start with you in the studio uh, 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 Rani. Uh, the, the comments from back and forth regarding the comments made by the Minister of Justice over the issue of open grazing, where in the nutshell, if we paraphrase everything, uh, he seemed to be saying that open grazing, he's not against open grazing, and he seemed he's in support of open grazing and comparing it to uh, issues of spare parts. Can you talk to us about this from your perspective? What have you made of all of this reaction about the, the comments by the Minister of Justice? Yeah, I was asked by saying that uh, there is this popular saying that those that God wants to destroy, he always adds in their hearts. Mm. And uh, in reference to King Pharaoh of Egypt, when they have the case of Israelite to go. And unfortunately, uh, Malami is not showing difference from what uh, we all have perceived about his person, and since he has taken the affair as the Antony General and Minister for Justice. Uh, but you will never expect anything less, because if you look at the pedigree of the man as a lawyer and as Attorney General of the Federation, you discover that m most of the time his utterances are uh, sometimes, uh, he, he has turned himself to the court of law, where he makes some pronouncements, and you ask yourself that as a custodian of the law, as supposedly the number one law officer of the country, as opposed to test the veracity of the law or advise the executive, you discover that he has turned himself into another uh, court of law. Now, what amuses most of us most is uh, sometimes when these lawyers come and bandits, uh, freedom of movement, freedom of this. Uh, may I be corrected? I'm not a lawyer, I'm an engineer, to find out that is freedom of movement allow me to go and be parading cow in the villa? Will freedom of movement will allow me to go and be sleeping in Malami house? So even as, as, as freedom of movement, the Constitution still empowers each state uh, governor as the owner of the land. They are the CNC of those states, and they are the ones that issue certificates of occupancies in those areas. Mm -hmm. If the Constitution has envisaged that everybody has right to any part of the country, then the Constitution would not have envisaged the issuance of certificates of occupancy of a particular plot of land. And even as at that, the certificates of occupancies are also provi uh, provisional, and also they have a period of time. So, now comparing a spa part business with open grazing calls a lot of questioning about the character and the, the, the capacity of people put in government. Don't forget, this government come about the issue of livestock transformation program. They come about with the issue of ruga. They come with the issue of ranching. And 
why they are proposing this thing is to ensure that we have uh, this open grazing thing is faded out gradually. But you could now see a supposed law officer, number one law officer, comparing a part business. Do you see people selling part on the road? Do you see people carrying part on their head? Do you see people moving part uh, with their foot? So is nomadism still thing that is in vogue in civilized country? Even him as a lawyer, why did he read law? Why did he stop as reading Arabic and stay as uh, an al al or an alpha instead of reading the, the book of law? Because law is, is, not a, is not a part of our culture. It's somebody that brought that kind of profession into our business. So for the anthropogenic to now come up, to say he's comparing law business, uh, I mean, uh, cattle, open grazing, to uh, swap our business, show the kind of capacity, the competence of the kind of person he is. That is one. Two, as a, as a member of federal executive cabinet, I think his responsibility, one, is to protect the interests of Nigerians. And again, to ensure that the laws are being done. But when you find out people like him going to the front page of newspapers, going to media houses, and be uh, spilling out things that are dividing us the more, you discover that there will be an agenda. Then I keep asking, what's the job of the DSS? If our Anthony General is saying people that are carrying AK-47, people that are killing people, people that are kidnapping, have license to move around, he has not come up to give us laws to ensure that we, we, we curtail all this madness that we have in the system, yet he come out to compare uh, businesses like this, like this, with that. I think it is, it is, it is just, uh, it is just at the moment, it's a slap on the Nigerian face. And again, you ask ourselves, do we still have a president in this country? Because he happened to be his boss, and he went on the media house to go and issue all sorts of things. Such a person is supposed to be suspended. So you have, you, have, you, have, you have a system whereby every cabinet member decides to do whatever they want to do. They say whatever they want to say without recourse to the feelings or how Nigerians have feelings. And the, the, the bias is also obvious. Why will you come and say you are comparing a spare party? Like, okay, let me ask you. I, I would have loved to ask him a question. When the ISBA law was passed in some northern state to ensure that there is no open sales of alcohol or outright ban of alcohol, is it not enforced? Are people not liable to drink alcohol in some states in Nigeria? Are, are people not banned in certain states in Nigeria from running and not drink alcohol? Is Sharia not in place in part of Nigeria? Is Nigeria is a secular state or a religious state? So if Nigeria is a secular state, why is on places we have Sharia law being practiced and in some places it's not being practiced? Why is on places alcohol are banned in some places alcohols are allowed? So and if states are not allowed to do this, I wonder how the law, chief law officer of our country will be comparing it to businesses. And you know where it is going. They divide us along religion, along ethnicity, just to amass more money into their pocket. All right. I, I believe that Nigerians are watching and they listen to what's going on. Let's go on a break. And when we come back, I'll be putting um, uh, Chris Kaningwand on, on his reaction to this. Stay with us on TVC Breakfast. You're watching TVC Breakfast. We're looking at the papers and the headlines across Nigeria. And I have with me Albani Akinwale in the studio, as well as uh, Chris Kainingwandu on Skype. Uh, let's get to Chris now. Chris, uh, before we went on break, we were looking at uh, most of the papers this morning have uh, the comments or the issue or the debate around the comments made by the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of the Federation, uh, Malami, uh, where he made... Uh, he was reported to have made a comment saying comparing uh, open grazing to spare parts uh, dealing as well. Or what do you make of that? Uh, well, Mike, uh, it's quite unfortunate. Um, as a student of law, uh, I, I, I want to know where the AGF got his authority uh, for his comment. Yes, in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, um, 1999 has amended. Um, yes, there is a, a, a freedom of movement is guaranteed for every Nigerian, irrespective of wherever you are, you are free to move from one place or the other. That has been guaranteed in the, uh, in the Constitution. Uh, that is the free right that you have as a Nigerian. You can move from any part of the country to the other. But where your freedom uh, stops, that is where the other person goes, um, begins. Don't also forget that even, um, even within our criminal code, the destruction of um, farm is a criminal offense. So if you have, a, if you, for whatever reason, you move, um, go into a farm and destroy the crop of somebody, uh, you are, you, 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 you'll be, you, you'll be charged, you can be charged for it. And um, you can be sentenced. So there is also that law in Nigeria. We have that in the Nigerian law. So 
the fact that um, uh, people have the right to move from one place to another does not necessarily mean that you can also have that right to go and be destroying people's properties. That is true. Then three, the governors of each state, through their various houses of assembly, has the right to promulgate laws that will govern their states. So what the, South, the southern governors um, did is, uh, is constitutional. All I feel they could do now is also to make sure that some of those resolutions that were reached can quickly, especially the one on open grazing, um, the state have not enacted uh, um, the necessary um, law to that should quickly do that so that you can have the enforcement of law. But that is not even my concern. My concern is the fact that now we are now getting to know why most of you know over the uh, over the uh, years we've been asking why is it that most of these perpetrators of this uh, evil art of um, destroying um, uh, cattle bearers or uh, whatever you call the headsmen going around destroying uh, farm crop, uh, killing people. Why is it that they are not being prosecuted? How come that we've not seen anybody being arrested and prosecuted for that, for those actions? Now, the pronouncement of the uh, the number one uh, law enforcement officer of the federation in the person of um, the, the AGF, which what he stated, what he said, has put pay to that. That definitely he is the one that is shielding these people from prosecution. I stand to be corrected, but his body language and the kind of statement he has come out to say, make, it can only but add um, some kind of backing to the activities of um, the, some of these people. And you ask yourself, is comparing um, uh, headsmen to uh, spare part um, uh, dealers or sellers, have you seen a spare part dealer killing somebody? Do you see them moving around? Do you see them going to uh, people's uh, places and destroying their properties? Have you seen them harnessing uh, villages? Have you seen them perpetrating all sorts of evils? No. That it, to me, it, it, it baffled me. Even as a student, uh, 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 little I know about law, that cannot come from somebody that is well-learned. And good enough, several legal luminaries have already started uh, talking. Um, I've seen the statement released by the former president of MBA, who is also the governor of on those states, um, currently the chairman of the Southern Governors Forum, um, Governor Craig Julio, I've seen the statement released by eminent jurist um, Fem Falano, and I also see, um, read the statement issued by Ebu Adeburu at SAN. All of them condemning the act and saying that what the AGF is saying doesn't make sense. And even at that, if for whatever reason you believe that um, what they have said is contrary to the Constitution, you have the right to go to court, and that was I expect the um, AGF to do. But the way it is now is like the AGF has taken a stand, and that in itself is dangerous. You have taken a stand against, um, in support of um, uh, the grazer because probably they're from your own part of the country. And that does the AGF is the Attorney General of the Federation, not the Attorney General of the North. Is the Attorney General of, and that is why we have always advocated that there should be a separation between the office of the attorney general and that of the minister of justice we have said this several times those two offices should be separated so that we can have a clear court um uh, distinctive um offices when you have the office of the agf sided with that of the uh, minister of justice that means politic then is not professional enough that means politics come into play on to have that level of profession that uh, the separation that is what we can so bet his statement is condemnable, and I believe that I don't know what got into the air. Personally, he's somebody I respect very well. There have been instances where he has made some pronouncements that I see that are, are germane. But there has also been instances where he has become so sentimental in the comment that at times he just... Don't forget the controversy that is... Um, um, the controversy between him and the EFCC chairman. To date, there was an investigation panel that was set up by the federal government to investigate the activities of the former uh, EFCC chairman. To date, the report of that panel has not been made public, and that does not speak well. So, let our public officers, the first of all, see themselves when they are elected or when they are appointed, to see themselves as officers of the Republic of Nigeria and not just personal. Even if you have a personal opinion, you are not supposed to come out and say because you are represent whatever you say represents the, uh, the, 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 the stand of the federal government. For him to have come out to make that statement means that the federal government of Nigeria has stated that is. President Buhari has taken a stand because you are a representative of the president and even that of the Federal Executive Council. So whatever statement is made, if he said that it's in his individual, uh, 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 yes.
but he is representing an institution, and that institution is the Ministry of Justice and the Office of the Attorney General of the, of, uh, of the Federation. And that, to me, is worrisome and should be condemned by people of goodwill. So, hmm. for me, um, I think I, I want to believe that the Attorney General was joking. I don't think that he was serious. Hmm. But if he is, then we are keep talking. Chris, Chris, thank you for your insight into this. Um, you, there's a statement you made that deductively, uh, if the Minister of State, uh, sorry, if the Minister of Justice makes a statement like that, a public statement, deductively it could be said that the President has taken a stand. And that is really, uh, really yeah. deep. That's really deep uh, in there. Yeah. Now, uh, yeah. uh, Obani, as we round off uh, generally, how, how can some of these things, how can we refine some of these things? Because it has to do with the way leaders engage uh, those at the lead. And for all of us, because we're talking about it, Nigeria that has been it divided Nigeria in the minds of people, and the, how do we reunite using the right way, using the right approaches? I think the first thing we need to do is, again, to start looking for competence and capacity in our leadership hmm. and to ensure that all these religious and ethnic bigots are never got into a corridor of power. And again, uh, to ensure that public office holders separate their past, their self from public office. Because Mr. Malami is talking as a northerner, not as a minister of justice for the country. And again, you look at the, the cases of MBA, the cases of Muslim lawyers group, uh, Joe, the Paul Ibe case, you discover that the body language of this man has always been biased. And again, even to put the case in context, this peer part dealer stays in the place. So let the headsmen also, or the cadreras, stay in a place. So if we begin to use logics and use our sense to put issues in perspective, if the parts sellers have a place they call where they sell parts, let us have a place where they will also be grazing field for the, for the cattle rearers. Then the government should ensure, I don't think it's difficult for this government to start changing people that are not adding value to this government. See, like you mentioned, case of this man is still there. Uh, Magu, we didn't hear anything. The FSMA was here, we didn't hear anything. Anything that goes to Malami's office mm. is Malami. So I advise the federal government that it is high time we weed out all these tired legs yeah. so that we ensure that competency and capacity are put in proper position. All right, we have to leave it here now. Obani Akinwale, thank you so much for coming. And also we need character. Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> thank you very much for coming. And Chris K. Nguandu, thank you very much for your time on the program as well. Thank you. My brother, I do have a nice weekend. Great, and you too.